Thank you for joining me. Hello, and welcome to the ARM Dev Summit. I'm Hari Pulapaka, and I lead the core OS platform program management team here in Microsoft. I've been part of the team for Windows and ARM since its inception. And today, I will be talking to you about all the exciting innovations we are undertaking at Microsoft in the Edge, AI, 5G, and PC space for ARM. I will focus more of my overview for Windows and ARM, what it is, the opportunity that the ARM ecosystem presents, and what you, the Windows developer, need to do to prepare your apps for Windows and ARM. And so with that, let's get started. If there's one thing we've learned from this past year is that the world is changing. We have new experiences and challenges for our company, which require a new level of agility and responsiveness to be successful. In a world where everything is done from a distance, work from home, there are new life scenarios that didn't even exist a year ago. Contactless delivery, making sure people wear masks for better safety at work, to social distancing compliance. This accelerates the needs of our customers and their desire to digitally transform their business. Keeping these realities of the world in mind, our industry is going through a fundamental transformation as it pivots towards a focus on the intelligent edge and intelligent cloud. There are three key technological advances happening right now that allow us to successfully undertake this journey. 5G for seamless instant connectivity, artificial intelligence or AI, and edge devices that connect intelligent devices to the cloud. Microsoft has played and continues to play a key role in this transformation. We have one of the largest public clouds with Azure, globally available, allowing you to run your workloads in the cloud in an optimized manner from anywhere. Microsoft Azure also has the public and private mech, also known as multi-access edge computing, for deploying your edge computing on-prem or in a telco environment, as you saw with the recently announced deal. And finally, we have the recently announced Azure Percept. It's an integrated, easy-to-use, ARM-based platform with added security for creating edge AI solutions. With Azure Percept, you can start prototyping in minutes with hardware accelerators and integrate seamlessly with Azure AI and Azure IoT services to enable everyone from sensing to knowing and finally taking actions. When I spoke about the key technology inflections right now with 5G, AI, and Edge, I didn't mention PC at all. However, with the recently released Windows 11, the Windows on ARM PC relies heavily on two of these technologies, 5G and AI. Microsoft launched the initiative called Always Connected PCs back in 2017. And since then, we have collaborated with our PC OEM partners to build, ship innovative PCs that provide the full PC experience. All of these ARM-based PCs are powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon processors, offer industry-leading performance, security, and connectivity with ultra-efficient power management capabilities. By enlightening the core Windows operating system to leverage key capabilities of the ARM architecture, such as Big Little, Low Power Standby, the ARM PCs are able to deliver more than 24 hours of local video playback and multiple days of battery life when carrying out normal day-to-day -day work. These PCs also offer 5G connectivity from day one via physical SIM or even LTE eSIM capabilities that allow our users to choose the mobile operator of their choice. With Microsoft Surface Pro X, we've invested heavily in utilizing the AI capabilities present in the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor to provide a better camera experience for your team's call with our feature called eye contact. This device is part of our secured core PC initiative, which means it has key OS security features on by default. These include things like device guard, virtualization-based security, hypervisor-based code integrity, and many more. When it comes to manageability of these devices, all of them support modern deployment and management solutions from Microsoft such as Windows Autopilot or Microsoft Intune. In fact, IT admins can use Intune to manage firmware on these devices today. In addition to Surface, we are also actively collaborating with our close OEM partners, such as Samsung, Lenovo, Acer, and HP. Samsung has an incredible Galaxy Book S LTE PC that is a fully-featured laptop in a super thin and light design. 
Lenovo recently announced the world's first 5G PC running on Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX processor, powered by Windows. We are also excited to partner with HP and Acer, who both have an incredible history of creating world-class devices. Over the course of this journey, we have collaborated closely with Qualcomm. While our first efforts were built on mobile-first socks, we have worked with Qualcomm to develop custom socks that are more optimized for PC use, like the 8CX and the SQ1 and SQ2, which are based on ARM Cortex technologies. They feature an amazing compute and graphical performance, but still preserve the best attributes of the ARM platform, such as its low power. Now let's talk about apps. Your apps are the reason our customers use a Windows PC. If you think about it, these are the different types of apps that run on Windows. A UWP app, an x86 Win32 desktop app, an x64 Win32 desktop app, and a driver, things like your antivirus. When we first released Windows on ARM support, a Win32 desktop app can run under x86 emulation mode or be ported to run as ARM64. If you're a driver, for example, your semantic antivirus, then you have to port or recompile your app to ARM64. If you're an x64 app, then you must port to ARM64 to run on Windows on ARM. Now this requires effort and sometimes can be hard to accomplish, especially if you don't have the ARM64 middleware libraries necessary for your app. With Windows 11, we've listened to our customers and now we've added support for emulating x64 apps. With Windows 11, all your apps can now truly run with emulation. With Windows 11, not only do we have x64 emulation support, we've added support for two new targets, ARM64 EC and ARM64X. These two new targets make our developers' life so much easier when porting apps to Windows on ARM. I am not aware of any competing OSs having similar technologies. ARM64 EC is a new emulation compatible target to easily rebuild your app and binaries to run with almost native performance. The key difference here is that the app is running as an x64 process. This bit is interesting because it then allows your app to load any middleware or DLLs or binaries that haven't yet compiled for ARM64. If you recall in the past, I had said, you know, that has been one of our biggest uh, stumbling blocks for people to port middleware libraries that they are not able to port to ARM64. However, your own code can run at native speed because it is being recompiled to ARM64 EC. And any third-party DLL can still run unchanged as x64. This reduces the cost to port to ARM64 for a lot of apps because it allows you to keep your third-party middleware DLLs unchanged. This is a valuable innovation we have added to Windows 11 that no other operating system has available. We've also added another new target called ARM64X. This is a multi-format binary that has ARM64 EC and ARM64X code all within it. This allows the same binary to load in an x64 process or in an ARM64 process. This is mostly useful for Windows system binaries as you will see in the next few slides. It is not relevant for most of the app developers. And obviously, we have the native ARM64 target. If you have the source for your entire app and its middleware, just recompile. Everything runs as an ARM process. It provides the best user experience. Let's talk about x86 emulation internals. You've seen this x86 emulation internal slide in my previous talks. Here, we are depicting a native ARM process and the kernel. All of the code here is fully native, meaning that it runs at the full native performance potential of the hardware. As you can see in the example slide, Edge, it runs natively. Edge is our browser. Now let's take a look at the emulator process. You can see that on the right side. The x86 emulator process uses Windows on Windows framework, or WOW, as we call it, which is how we run 32-bit x86 programs on 64-bit Windows PC. If you look at an x86 WoW process, you have the x86 application code and x86 system DLLs followed by an entire native WoW layer. The WoW layer includes support for managing system calls and a module that emulates x86 CPU instructions. On an x64 system that you're used to today, 
the CPU module relies on the hardware, the CPU processor directly to execute the x86 instructions. On an ARM-based system, there is no such capability. And the CPU module must do the translation on demand in software, which is where we come in with our binary translator. Going back to the WoW layer, you may be wondering why the x86 system DLLs provided by Microsoft are subject to the same emulation as application code. I mean, we own the code. Why do they need to be emulated? However, that is not the case. We've developed something called the compiled hybrid PE or compiled hybrid binaries that can be used instead of x86 system DLLs. These are ARM64 code pages, but decorated as x86 calling conventions so that they can be loaded within an x86 process and run at native speed. So as you can see, any time an app calls into a Windows code, it runs at native speed. And it's only the app code that runs under emulation. So let's see how that breaks down by scenario. For a CPU intensive app, with all of the work we've done with JIT optimizations, caching, and chippy, you get good performance. For an IO or a GPU intensive workload, you know, where the majority of the time is being spent in the kernel or within uh, device drivers, you're primarily running native code because that's already ARM64, and you get awesome performance. Now let's talk about x64 emulation internals. When it comes to x64 emulation on the 64-bit Windows 11 on ARM, we can't use WoW because we don't use Windows on Windows to run 64-bit process. Instead, we have a much simpler architecture that matches exactly how a native ARM64 process runs on Windows. You can clearly see this in the architecture diagram as well. The underpinnings of this simplified design are the new innovative code generation types, ARM64 EC and ARM64X I talked about previously. For x64 emulation, the core Windows System32 DLLs are all built of the type ARM64X, which allows them to load into an x64 process. They run with full-on native speed, and at any time, any x64 process calls into any Windows functionality, create file, create registry, create lock, it will go into this ARM64 mode and run at native speed. The other interesting thing to note here is that since there is no WoW, Windows on Windows anymore, there is no file or registry virtualization. When an x64 app writes to the system32 directory, it writes to the same system32 directory that is used by ARM process on Windows. Same goes for all of the registry keys. Now, this is something that only sophisticated app developers may have to keep in mind. Most of the app developers don't have to worry about this level of detail. In terms of performance, the x64 emulation builds on all of our learnings with x86 emulation. And the performance of the x64 apps on Windows 11 will be a pleasant surprise to all our customers. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this slide, but all of the innovations I've talked about are available for developers to use with Visual Studio today. We also have support for developing apps for Windows and ARM in open source tools such as LLVM or Clang. These are the most prominent compilers available for open source tools, and they're used by very popular apps such as Firefox or Chromium to build their apps for Windows and ARM. For those who are interested in learning more with demos and tutorials, please watch Mark's talk for Windows and ARM development. In addition to the session from Mark for developing Windows and ARM, we also have a session by Marcus which talks about debugging apps for Windows and ARMs. Hopefully you will learn more about Windows and ARM from watching all of these sessions. With that, I want to end my session, and we can't wait to see the apps you build for Windows and ARM. Thank you.